There is a classic rule in uh, electronics and that rule is that every electronic circuit is as good as its power supply. And that is completely true. And especially when we are talking about audio, about radios, um, the uh, build-up of the power supply, how it is made, is extremely important. And for radios and audio, the biggest uh, problem is hum, ripple, uh, especially for audio it's ripple, say a fine, faint uh, background noise coming out of the power supply, that's a standard uh, problem. And I've published many, many circuits about power supplies on my YouTube channel, so this is only a vlog working on the long wave super heterodyne radio. Of course, I had to make a power supply. And this could be, for instance, a, a few good tips how to make such a power supply. Of course, this is a radio. We have uh, an audio part. We have the IF amplifier. We have the oscillator. The local oscillator and such an oscillator, local oscillator, of course, must have a stabilized voltage. Otherwise, when the voltage is not stabilized, and for instance, you lift up the audio amplification too much, that means that the um, power transformer starts to give out current, and when it is not stabilized, the voltage will drop. That means that, say in a worst case scenario, the VFO, the local oscillator, will also change its frequency. When you lift up the audio amplifier level, that will be done with this potentiometer. So I need a stabilized power supply. And I had a f quite a few of them uh, say a complete box here with all kinds of stabilized power supplies. This is more or less old school, but anyway, it works. It's the uh, 7805, but here I've used the 78, and they are positive voltage regulators, the 7815. So it means that it gives out 15 volts. I need for this radio uh, 12 volts, but I will show you a kind of trick that was also already in my uh, other videos. This is the, the voltage regulator that I used. And I tested it and it gives out a very, very precise voltage on 15 volts. It's 15.08 volt at its output. So in one hundredth of a voltage uh, it's, it works properly. And of course we know the classical uh, 7812. I often use it but well this, was, uh, this regulator was in my stock so I had the ID to use it and of course it's a power regulator so we can handle uh, enough current etc. So again a few uh, perhaps small tips when you want to make a power supply. I'm not talking about a power supply for say 100 watt or 500 watt or whatever audio amplifier. That's a completely other story. And I don't get into that issue. Here is say the classical uh, AC transformer, 220 volts in, 230 volts in, and 12 volt out. That's here. And I always use in the primary of the 
supply transformer a fuse. That is very important. You have to take account uh, regarding the inrush current. Because when such a transformer on its secondary is loaded with a resistor or whatever, and you switch on 230 volts AC or 50, uh, at 50 hertz or 110 volts AC at 60 hertz, doesn't matter, there is an inrush current. And that inrush current is, in many cases, because the transformer is not... Um, at in that first split second not in a state where it is able to give back energy uh, to the primary circuit that means that the AC resistance in that first split second when you switch on such a transformer and there is a load here uh, the inrush current can be very high so, in general, uh, the, um, here, this unit, the fuse, has to, has to have sometimes, not always, but anyway, a quite high um, amperage range, uh, range. Because of that inrush current, of course, when there's no load here, when the transformer has a very, very high um, input resistance, both in DC terms and in AC terms, say we are talking about 5000 ohms DC resistance, that means uh, in AC terms an extremely high input resistance, the inrush current is low and um, well, that has also an effect on the protecting fuse. Important to tell when the output here, the secondary side, is shortcut, the uh, current that flows in the primary also gets to a critical point. And these transformers, transformers at least in Europe, are uh, made with, say, a kind of safety switch inside when the temperature inside the core gets too high that safety switch switches off the transformer completely so you can throw it away could be an issue of course in a certain way that's very good um, say protecting us for fires etc etc but the old school um, idea was to use that uh, fuse in the primary and also what I always use is a fuse in the secondary of the transformer so here the primary here the secondary so here a fuse and here a fuse it's somewhat overdone I am aware of that so here a fuse and here a fuse this is the primary, this is the secondary, this is say 230 volts, this is say 12 volts or whatever, could be 24 volts, etc, etc. And I use this uh, fuse before it enters the bridge rectifier. In many cases a bridge rectifier, not always. So it's very sloppy drawing but anyway I hope you and of course everyone knowing something about these circuits knows what I mean positive negative AC etc so the important issue was the fuse that's here and here uh, and you can see here the primary fuse here the secondary fuse And that works good up to, say, circuits that work up to approximately 50 volts. Very important advice is use a smoothing capacitor of uh, uh, 4700 microfarad for audio 
and for radio circuits. A smaller capacitor will give some ripple. More or less always, but uh, you can take in account that also in general the voltage regulator. So this one can take away some ripple, but test that with your oscilloscope. That's, that's the most important thing to tell. And the trick that I wanted to show is this. I have now here the um, 7815 regulator. This is the positive, this is the negative, it goes to crown, this is the in. And you can find the data sheet of that toe 3. This is toe 3. On the World Wide Web. Uh, so here we have the <laughs> negative, negative, here also negative. Sorry for the sloppy, draw, sloppy drawing. And this is positive in, could be, say, uh, in my case, 30 volts. Output, of course, stabilized to 50 volts. Very precise. And then you can drop. The voltage with silicon diodes and use silicon and not germanium. Say with a few silicon diodes, and I've now drawn two of them, each of that silicon diode drops the output voltage, the positive output voltage, with a, say a 0 0.7 volts. So two in a row make that you can use this 7815 regulator as a regulator for say approximately 12 volts. And you can add uh, another silicon diode. Germanium diodes are in general not usable. Their voltage drop is too low and their leak current is too I, but anyway, uh, this is the say good setup, and I'm surely, surely going to use it in this circuit. Furthermore, uh, there could be more things to tell um, that are important when you have a voltage regulator. This is say the standard figuration uh, could be a uh, 7812, that's a positive voltage regulator. Of course, you also have negative voltage regulators. Uh, here positive, and here for audio and radio, the 4700 microfarad cap is advised. And then uh, say connect here between the positive and the negative a small capacitor parallel to a resistor parallel that was all parallel to a resistor and also here at the end the same the same id and also mount here Small capacitor, say 100 microfarad, uh, bridged with a 100 nanofarad capacitor and a 100k resistor. Uh, that means that the regulator always sees a kind of impedance resistance at its output, so it starts to, to give current. That's important. It must be made in such a way that such a regulator does not see an endless uh, impedance at its output. Again, sorry for the sloppy uh, drawing, but I hope it was uh, a little bit um, clear what I wanted to show. And of course, don't make the capacitor here at the output of the regulator 
higher, give it a higher value compared to the uh, capacitor at the input. In that case, when you switch off the circuit, uh, the current can, can flow in the wrong direction, so back to the voltage source. Of course, uh, I'm not completely sure whether the 7812 or whatever uh, regulator is protected for that effect, but when you want to be absolutely sure, use here a silicon diode. To that output capacitor. In such a case, the capacitor, when the voltage regulator is switched off, can never uh, send current back into the uh, regulator. Well, that were some tips. Uh, my camera runs out. I'm on 15 minutes. That's uh, in this case a very long time. Thanks for watching. Pen over somewhat, finally. The local oscillator, speaker, output regulator, and I will use here a few diodes to get to 12 volts. That's what I need. The transformer, and also a good idea is to, when you do experiments, cover the 230 volts, the high voltage sides with some kit or with a piece of tape so that you cannot touch them. That's also important and here is the main switch and it's also uh, immersed in this tape. Coroplast by the way is the best tape. I made a video about it on my YouTube channel Coroplast. I think it's made in Germany. It's absolutely the best tape and it also can withstand uh, very high voltages. Even voltages up to 5000 volts or so. My camera runs and runs so well. Anyway, thanks for watching.